I'm gonna tell y'all guys what. After a long day of hiking, cold creek water straight from a good filter tastes incredible. But you know, these modern filters, they're amazing. They can make dirty water that's full of bacteria and all kinds of nasties actually for the vast majority of the time safe to drink. A 9-9 success ratio. But the thing is, a real filter, what I real, really what a filter does is it uses like a screen net to filter out the larger particles. So, what exactly would you do if you was in the middle of the woods, you found some dirty water, you boil, you boiled it and everything, but it was still really dirty. You get that really gritty taste in your mouth, that gritty feeling, and you know if you drink water like that for a long time, it can actually wear down your teeth. So how do you fix that? Well, you know what? I'm going to show you how to make a primitive water filter. I'm going to make it in a two-liter soda bottle, so that, that way you can actually see the individual layers and components. And I'm going to show you how this is done. Okay, y'all. So there's going to be, you know, a couple things you're going to need for this. First off, you're going to need a container. Preferably a cylindrical container. You could do what I did in my last video, which is take a strip of bark. And you fold it properly so that that way um, you can fit stuff inside of it. So if you're using a bottle like this, first thing, you need to take the cap, you need to put a couple holes in it, okay? You don't need much. Just two little holes will work just fine. Alright, so once you've got that done, put your cap back with your bottle. Next what you do, take your knife or your sharp rock or whatever tool you're using. You go up as high on the bottle as you can and you just cut the bottom portion off. Like so. So now you have an upside down bottle. Okay? Now what you need is your ingredients. I have more sand that I've collected other than just this. And I'll also have more charcoal. And I'll also have moss. So, the first things you're going to need is you're going to need moss. I recommend moss over grass. Then what you're going to need, you're going to need a great amount of charcoal, a really ample amount. I have a lot more than this. Uh, this is just a little bit of extra I collected. I have a lot more put away. You're going to get your charcoal from your fire, as seen here. And your sand, you can get this dang near anywhere.
you're going to make a stand for your bottle. Now one thing you can do is you can cut a hole up near the top. Uh, you can wrap cordage around it to hold it. Or you can just make a stand for it to sit on. And have a drip bucket or something to catch the drip underneath it as you can see here. Now what you're going to do is you're going to take your moss, as you can see here, you're going to break some pieces off, about pieces about that big, and you're going to take it and you're going to stuff it inside the bottle. I like to add moss over grass because moss has iodine in it, and because moss is a very uh, fibrous type of grass, it uh, acts as a better filter. So once you put everything in there, just ram it all with your fist okay then you're going to add your charcoal you want each layer to be about an inch or so thick now that's nowhere nearly an inch and this is where my reserves come in You want your charcoal to be nice little grounds like that. Okay, next you're going to want sand. Okay, you're going to take your sand and you're going to apply it over top of the charcoal. Just shake it down. Okay, once you get it about that thick, you're going to ram it down with your fist. Now, as you can see, it's a lot thinner now. Then, more charcoal. And you alternate these layers until you get close to the top, then you add in a very coarse sand. Or a um, fine gravel. Then I want to add a very fine layer, or not not fine, but a very small layer of charcoal, and then the coarser sand. The coarser sand is going to have noticeable bits of rock in it, like you can see there. Alright, and then you'll pack that down, okay? Now the filter is complete. Now we're going to take a nice grimy, evil, nasty sedimented water. I'm going to pour it in kind of slow all around so that, that way it distributes itself easily. And as you can see, you can see it starting to seep through the layers. I will rotate this just a little bit so you can see it better. It will take a little while for it to seep through those layers. Oops, spilt a little bit. Now, the initial run through that you're going to get out of this filter is going to be really dirty. It is not going to be nice and clear. Why is that? Well, that's because your first run through is going to wash all your filter components off. Well, it's starting to drip now. It took it long enough, huh? Well, not sure if I'm going to be able to show you the full deal um, before it gets too dark here. I'm going to try and show you as much as I can before it gets too dark. Um, I'm probably going to continue this to tomorrow 
so I can show you the full power of this filter. All right, y'all. So, um, filter is actually working pretty well considering the water I put in and that it has not cleaned itself out yet. It is doing very well. Um, I will come back when there's more daylight and I will show you the real capabilities of this filter. Okay, y'all. So, here's the filter. It's the next day, daylight. Um, I'm going to show you power of this filter. Now, this filter is not 100% cleaned out yet. It's still producing a semi-green liquid. It's a little paler than that right there. And that's because, one, what I'm using is that freaking dirty. And two, because the individual components in the filter still aren't very clean yet. Now, if you want to help to make this filter work even better on its first few times around, um, wash each individual component thoroughly before you install it into the filter itself. I'm still running experiments with this particular filter design, um, testing how what, testing to see what materials work better for what. Um, you know what I mean? My next test for this filter would be instead of ground charcoal where it's noticeable clumps and chunks, I'm going to use powder charcoal. Yeah, if you look in here, you can see the individual layers. See, it's got a pretty good output right now. Enough for me to be able to show you to compare the two differences. So, here's what we have the mucky, dirty water after it's run through the filter. So, it's a pretty impressive filter for it to be made out of nothing but the stuff you're surrounded by in the wilderness. Um, the cool thing about this style of filter is that as it filters more and more stuff out, that stuff gets embedded throughout the filter. And what will happen is, is that stuff will add in to the filtering capabilities. So, as time wears on, instead of it coming out green like this, it's going to come out clear is tap water. My older filter, um, the, the one I was testing designs with and came out with this particular design, it's produ it produces water that is clear as tap water. Okay, this water is so clear that it literally, if you put two bottles of water side by side, you can't exactly tell the difference. That's why I have all my bottles marked that are filtered. Okay. And here we go, y'all. This is finished. On the left, you have pre filtrate. On the right, you have the filtrate, the output. Hope y'all enjoyed this video. Don't y'all forget to like, subscribe, and comment. Like my Facebook chant, Facebook page, Caveman Cody. Um. I'll see y'all in the next video. Y'all take care.